Ladies and gentlemen and in-betweeners, danger, danger, fire the disco! I am your host, Alexander Rodriguez, for On The Rocks Radio Show, where celebrities and cocktails mix tonight. Celebs from the entrepreneurial world unite with Netflix's Hey Queen TV personality, model, musician, and author, Eddie Danger is here, with fashion maven and socialite, Kayla Methven, and Lucky Soul CEO and founder, Vinnie Merrill is here, and me, your favorite host, with the deepest voice. So raise a glass and let the drinks begin. <laughs> Thank you for being Life is a banquet and most poor suckers are starving to death I'd like to propose a toast This is On The Rocks with Alexander coming at you live Where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV And, well, that's about it so pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On The Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord knows it's going to be a bumpy night. Buttons and bows and pantyhose. This is On The Rocks, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. So my friend posted on Instagram, and I wanted to share a funny thing, because whenever I text my friends and I'm going out for, like, drinks or whatever, you always get that one text from somebody from the group chat saying, oh, I'd love to go, but I'm broke. A, they spent too much money at happy hour the day before. B, they spent too much money boosting their Instagram post. And C, they're trying to get you to say, oh, I got you, boo, come on out. <laughs> boo, I don't got you, pay for yourself. Uh, but here's what my friend posted, it's so funny. It's, um, I'm broke, but not like poor broke. I'm classy type of broke, I'm broke A. Huh. Maybe they should have called me. <laughs> Did you hear that response? Maybe, maybe yeah. they should have called the KFCRS. Yes. <laughs> I would have taken care of it. No. Nah. Mm. Okay, this is our rapid fire emergency. We have our first rapid fire. Uh, what is the most ridiculous thing that you've spent money on? Eddie, you go first. Oh, uh, some underwear from uh, from France when I was like pretty oh, young. Good job. Yes, I I, I decided She's I was good. She's not good to I no clue what that means. That's what I can say in French. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go full bore on like having some like uh, I was like named some top stripper in the city, so oh, I was like I'm gonna show up looking like a fucking like a diva oh, oh. as a stripper though. Uh, it's ten dollars per F word, just so you know, Eddie Danger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So either way, so I was. <laughs> Here we go. I need your I need your debit card. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, yeah, they were like it was like a like a glam uh, metal moment with like some uh, leopard print. I think it was like um, like two hundred bucks for the like two fifty maybe for the pair of underwear. Very stupid. Well, but decision. your fans will pay five hundred dollars for your used underwear, so yeah. I, it it works. It's still a profit. <laughs> yes, it, well, it's in the archives now, so it's like it's <laughs> my own sort of relic. I haven't decided to. It's in the Smithsonian. Yes, <laughs> some <laughs> weird fan named Smithsonian. Porn fucking Stripsonian. Yeah. Stripsonian. <laughs> Kayla, now I know you. Uh, you lead a very extravagant life. What is the most ridiculous thing that you have spent your money on? Oh, God. Um, I would have to say probably hotels. Room oh. service, parties, yeah. traveling. Yeah, probably I, that. I think um, probably at the Atlantis Hotel, I stayed in that suite where, you know, the two buildings connect. Yeah. I think I spent around uh, 30000 that night. Oh, that's nothing, Kayla. 30000 <laughs> yeah. for that night. For one night? I mean, see, that's crazy. <laughs> but you stay at these hotels because you want luxury, and then you invite your friends over. And then, like, I always call room service when I'm, like, plastered. And I'm like, bring it on, I know, but the on. worst part was is that it was just a layover. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to write like so a whole book just even, based on your like. It wasn't even a vacation. I was just waiting for the next flight the next morning. <laughs> boom, boom, 30,000. Boom, boom. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Vinny, what is the most <laughs> extravagant thing you've spent on? Extravagant? Shit. Or like the strangest thing that you spend a lot of money on? I would have to say probably about a week ago, I was at my friend's dispensary. Mm. And he was introducing me to some new, <laughs> some oh. new marijuana that he had. And the funny thing is I thought he was going to give it to me free. Oh, but wow, when wow. we went to the checkout, <laughs> he was like, all right, it's going to be $200. And I was oh, like, what? <laughs> so end up trying it. It was the worst weed I've ever tried in my life. Oh, it man. did absolutely nothing. I would have said no. And I it literally was only a little no. nugget. No yeah. $200 for a nugget? That yeah. better be a chicken nugget if I'm going to spend $200 on any nugget. Yeah, so he yeah. had he has some something coming back to him. So. But this is a weird thing. <laughs> oh, wow. Bad mode. Bad mode. <laughs> no free water for him. But this is a weird thing in Hollywood. People invite you places and you never know what the protocol is because I get invited and some people know when they invite you to like a formal event, right. the bill's on them or should be. It's mm -hmm. When I always invite like my friends, you know, the bill's on me. Oh, girl. <laughs> 
I thought there was a ghost in here because there are ghosts in here. See, but but I don't also want to be Maybe. that person that just assumes that when you hang out with somebody that it's going to be paid for. And I don't care whether it's paid for or not, but just let me know so I know what to be prepared well, for. Wouldn't that be nice? I was just in Aruba and I like racked up a bill that was like 80 bucks, but I was in like oh, a that's gay... a huge bill, babe. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was in Aruba. Like he, he bought like a servant for 10 days. I just, <laughs> I just assume that things like when I go into a place, if they don't take a fucking card first and, get, and start up a tab, mm -hmm. that's protocol. I, I mean, that's what I'm used to. Yeah. So I was like, I guess they're taking care of, somebody's taking care of this because nobody took a card. And so I walked out of the club and I was completely fucking hammered at that point. And so the guy chases me out and he's like, I felt like such a fucking douche. For $80? Like, yeah, oh, come on. I mean, really? these people are like, I mean, yeah. Well, wow. I mean, it's a different environment, yeah. but you and know. It's a lot of money. I think he needs to travel with me more. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I could talk. Yeah, you now, take her up on that offer. You gotta take her up on that offer. I mean, like, I, she'd I, have you in her control lingerie. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. Let's travel right into it. Right There's shall like a web series happening. <laughs> Thank you. And Vinny in the back, he's like, "Here's some water." Oh, right. so well, yeah, Either way, so, so I got chased out for a fucking eighty dollar uh, thing because I, I thought. Yes, you already owe me sixty dollars right now for all your efforts. By the way, just letting you know. I'm just teasing. Forget. Do you have to beep? Beep every time. No, we're live, girl. There's no beep in here. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Boop, boop. Oh, oh. No, but uh, you, you got a porn guy in your <laughs> studio. I'm that sorry. That is true. But that, that, that is true. How do we communicate? I'm trying. Okay. Like Nell. <laughs> 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 Nell in the forest. No, but you and I do a lot of LGBT events. Absolutely. And it Wonderful. should always be because, you know, we always get the call hey, it's a nonprofit. Come help out. Right. Or ex for exposure. <laughs> Pay my rent and exposure. Um, but there's. Fine, if I'm gonna lower my appearance fee or help Take an care of me, you know? All I need is to be liquored up for the night and I'll be happy. And I'm happy. yeah, and that happens. Give me a place to, me to sleep too. that's safe, you know? Oh Either wow. Way. Yeah. Oh wow, he needs a place to sleep as well. Well okay. when you were traveling out of town, you know, Absolutely. It's, like they should have been Yeah, yeah. You are, you're yeah. you're a gypsy. Anyway, these are the type <laughs> of rapid fire questions we're gonna have all throughout the show. Um and have thank you, you. I'm so sorry. Have you seen any of his videos? I have not. Oh, okay, we gotta check that out. Yeah, we're going yeah, to have to check. Oh, that. I think it's like my, like my radio show. You haven't checked out my radio show. I'm like, oh, duh, his video. No, we know your. I gotta we get know caught up. Girl, he's got stuff for everybody. You really don't. You really don't need to see any. No, of that. he's very talented. Okay. I'm going. He's in so that case, talented. I'm gonna take your word for it. And no matter what team you're on, he's got something for you. I uh, have something. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, on a good note, thank you to our sober listeners for tuning in. <laughs> we love you. Thank you for holding our hair back, driving us home. Drunk texting is literally the only sport I'm good at, for which I have won awards. If you consider community service an award, I oh, thought, maybe. Maybe you did. Oh, yeah, we should do community serve. service together. Uh, yes. How awesome would that be? You're like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, United Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Satchel, TuneIn, Satchel, or Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Now I'm happy to announce that we are on Roku. And of course, we are on Facebook Live right now on Trendy Now in San Diego, True FM in Ohio, and on the West Coast on GED Magazine. Hello, GED Magazine. Hey. And nationally on Queer 40. Check out my movie news, uh, movie news on Queer 40. This week I talked about the Avengers craze. Everybody's uh -huh. seen it by now. No, 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 no. I haven't seen it. Don't ruin nothing yet. Wait, Vinny, oh but here's God. the official word from the Avengers creative team. Two weeks is the limit, and then you can share spoilers. We ain't there yet. You said now trending app, and they have the Who Invited Her. That's a, that's based out of San Diego. I love those guys. Yeah, so yeah, much. yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, the, they're my favorite. Uh, now trending app is such a great app. They yeah. stream our show. They stream the video for our show for free. Absolutely. And uh, great. We love now trending. They're, they yes. are family to me. Yes. At this point, yeah. Yeah, they hired me to come do New Year's <laughs> Eve. Um, I don't think they're going to hire me again. <laughs> well, I mean. That was one of the events where, like, drink all you want. This was at 9 p.m., and I had to call in New Year's you, Eve. You go home in a wheelbarrow at that point. Uh, or an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> True <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm like, boop, boop. <laughs> ambulance right. men are so cute. Anyway, uh, but the Avengers, everybody's going crazy. A Southern Korean pilot was thrown into jail because he left his post to go watch the film. Also, at Domino's, a worker was arrested for beating up his co-worker because the co-worker was talking about <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> like, this is serious. Yeah. I have a spoiler for you y'all chris hemsworth is chubby for the whole film hated it uh check out my movie news at queer40.com yeah i've never seen one avengers you haven't missed oh sorry kurt kurt our engineer is very into it he bought his <laughs> ticket like at 6 a.m single avengers it's, uh, I think Deadpool I've seen. Um, see, Deadpool's good. I've seen, I've seen maybe right. a few. I, uh, I saw Aquaman. Right. Oh, Aquaman terrible. Just because he's t good looking. You know? Yeah, but I'm his a big acting fan. ruined it for me. Well, th not the rest of it. <laughs> well, well, uh, the script was really rough. It was like, awful. I don't think it was really the fact that they couldn't act. It was the fact that what they were saying was awful. That's well, true. Well, honey, they're underwater. 
<laughs> she has a point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just love that Nicole Kidman comes out at the end in this huge ball ground. Oh, thank you for the water noise. Sorry. <laughs> Nicole Kidman comes and I'm not ruining everything. She comes out at the end with a beautiful ball gown. I'm like, were you changing while everybody was fighting the big <laughs> war? Because that's exactly right. what happened. And she's like, here I am. Oh. I'm just finally happy Nicole Kidman got a part as a Marvel. Uh, I mean, it's been so many years. I'm mixed on this. I'm really? mixed up all the A-listers all of a sudden. Uh, like uh, Catherine, uh, no, uh, Kate Blanchett was in the last one. Right. Nicole Kidman, uh, Julia Roberts is joining the whole franchise. Right. Maybe this is what we have to do now. We have to put on suits and the paint our faces. And, That's where you know, Hollywood's going. This is where You're Hollywood's not anybody. going. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, don't agree I don't. With that. Do I have to stop my Botox then? I mean, at this point, <laughs> since I'm wearing a mask the whole time. Girl, you're you would be an amazing Avenger. Like you'd be sexy Avenger. Like your superhero would. Just, I mean, be Madame Method Avenger. Yeah. It would just be me and a whip in my lingerie. You already lingerie. have the name. You already have the the, the name. Yeah, you got a good name. That's yeah. for sure. I love Thank it. Thank you, baby. Um, Thank the you. show is brought to you in media partnership with Here TV. Here TV reaches millions of viewers each month and has produced Academy Award-winning films and Emmy-nominated uh, award shows. All the Rocks now appears on Amazon Prime, HearTV.com, and HearTV app for free. Whoop, whoop. Our website has been updated on TheRocksRadioShow.com. Everything you ever want to know, see for free, listen to our shows for free on TheRocksRadioShow.com. Mama Rose is in the chat room at UBNGo.com. Uh, and Facebook, ask your question. She will uh, she'll ask me if it's burning. Question. Are we uh, burning? There's, uh, Facebook, well, come on. You've been on set this week, Eddie. I How, need a question. Burning? No, we get tested. Thank <laughs> no, you. No, I know. In fact, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had Wesley Woods on the show last week, and <sighs> if you're going to date anybody and have a one night stand with anybody, do it with a porn star. They have to get tested. They have to take such good care of themselves. Yeah, it's it's like it's bi weekly. Wait, I, was, yeah. wasn't yeah. I with him in yoga? Oh, yes, you were. Yeah, he's so, oh, he's great. Oh, he's, he's so a funny. He's sweetheart. Yes. I love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, he really showed me some positions. <laughs> well, girl, he's, he, he knows all the positions. Are you uh, as good as him? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Are you as good as him? I don't know. They're so like the, different. The, the, I'm, I do, very very I do different, different styles. I always do a different We'll act. check that out later because we have no clue. We don't check that out? Uh, oh, we don't know. Okay. I haven't checked it out. So. Well, I think you'll enjoy Eddie's films maybe I, I, more than Wesley. Oh. Wesley is just now dipping his toe okay. into the whole mm -hmm. bi straight porn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, well, but, there you go. Yeah, but you guys have such a different energy mm -hmm. from my research. Research. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. I it's, like to kind of like spread it out. I've got a lot going on. So it's kind of like, uh, I don't know what sort of scene I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, it's always it's a gay, straight. I don't fucking really care as long as they're paying and um, and the co-star is attractive, you know? Okay. I the just co-star thing I just would be need, hard for me. I just need something that would, you know, make an heiress happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is a video here. Well, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Something with money, dripping in gold. Yes, Maybe a bucket of chicken. Is. Who knows? Like a whole bucket KFC. of chicken. Yes. Why not? There's plenty of chicken in gay porn, <laughs> and that's a term. Mm. Not into the chicken. Uh, hello to our engineer, Kurt. Kurt, do you have a pun? I always have a pun. Okay, you. Kurt, you're so punny. You have to give straight people their time in okay. media as well. I have, I have an easy one for you today. Okay. okay. Uh, what is a pirate's favorite letter? Uh, R. No, it's all, they're, they always love the C. Oh, I think uh, I know. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you see Kayla? Yeah. She is so good at being a polite socialite. She knows a yes, polite laugh, and then like inside dying because right. Kurt, that was pretty bad. <laughs> no, Kurt, do not give yourself a drum roll. Oh, poor Kurt. We have oh to give him God. his time. And you know what? Our viewers love his puns, and they seem to be getting no, worse they're really funny. <laughs> I like it. It's okay. Uh, like us on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Facebook On The Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I'll be there. Info at ontherocksradioshow.com. Real fast before we dive into our show. SoCal Mussies, Go See The Secret Garden, a limited three-week run uh, of 3D Theatrical's latest production at Cerrito Center for the Performing Arts. I was there opening night. It's playing May 3rd through the 19th. Beautiful musical. They did such a great job. I saw the original on Broadway. Go to the... Uh, 3dtheatricals.org. Get your tickets now. Um, and a beautiful space as well. Girl. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is that in Pasadena? Uh, it's in Cerritos. Cerritos. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Beautiful theater space. Uh, it's on my Instagram, and it was amazing. Okay. Kurt, what is our call-in number, by the way? Okay, Kurt's going to grab in our call and number. We have oh, a request. Why do you take some calls? That's We hardly ever do because people get so scared. Like fun, though. Especially with me as the host because like, if they're like... If they're not good, then we make fun of them anyway. <laughs> please call in. Right. Um, also, uh, thank you to I Like Scary Movie Experience. And since you guys are in L.A. and 
uh, you leave on the 9th. What day is that? Uh, fucking, I don't know. Thursday, I, I'm doing. I a, I'm flying out to Salem, Oregon, at Ooh. the point. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah, oh. exactly. That actually <laughs> excites me. Uh, <laughs> Are we making a witch movie? I, th that's in Boston. Oh, no, no, in like okay. the, in that area. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm getting <laughs> that mixed up too. S Salem. Yeah. So, sorry. Um, go to I like scary movie experience. Uh, it's an Instagrammer and art exhibit uh, dream. You should get a private. Uh, you should get a private session to walk through. I'm playing a few pictures uh, right now. Uh, they recreate your your s favorite sets uh, from horror films. No one jumps out. It's really an art piece. It's The Shining, Beetlejuice, It, Lost Boys, Nightmare um, on Elm Street. And I mean, they have these sets recreated every detail. Here's the waiting room from, from Beetlejuice, um, as you can Can't see. see um, it is such a beautiful experience. And uh, wow. the staff literally is on hand to take selfies of you. Go to I Like Scary Movies, experience.com. Uh, it's here for six more weeks. You have to go. If you're not, it, it's it, so cool. Like that Beetlejuice, the, the setup, the photos that I've seen have been next level. It's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's so cute. If you're a fan of the, sh of the movie, yeah. it's, it's like the, you want that photo op, you know? Well, and I'm going to share uh, next week uh, picks from the sets of It, and I mean it's unbelievable. It has a musical. It. What is it? It. It. Oh, oh I, you were talking. <laughs> I, I thought you were saying the clown thing had a had its oh, own musical. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. um, the call in number, by the way, is three two three eight four three two eight two six. Again, that's three two three eight four three two eight two six. When you call in, speak up. Please. Uh, okay. Can someone call in. I'm getting really bored. No, you're not, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real fast. On the Rock's upcoming appearances, Saturday, May 18th from 11 to 4 p.m. West Hollywood Park. Uh, I will serve as MC for Vanderpump Dogs World Dog Day with all the Bravo celebrities you can throw a stick at. Um, and we're filming for Vanderpump Rules. Go to VanderpumpDogs.org for more info. Also, I will be your MC at Out at the Fair at San Diego County Fair, June 1st, starting at 5 p.m. on the main stage with comic Jim Gaffigan. It's always a day that's super, super fun. And they sent me, their mascot is the Dabbing Unicorn. I don't know if you guys can see Aww. it. So that's sexy, cute. so hot. Yeah. Oh, I need an Eddie Danger pin, by the way. I have some in my bag. Can I please have one? Yeah, sure. And we're gonna, you're going to pass Absolutely. them out. Anyway, go to outofthefair.com for more info. All right, let me introduce our panel for tonight. We are talking about celebrities in the entrepreneurial world who brand themselves. We couldn't get three more different entrepreneurs in one room if we tried. You guys are so <laughs> different. And we're going to talk about right. how running your own business. Oh, we do have a call. Oh, damn. Um, yay, my wish came true. You, you see, I'm a magical unicorn. Oh. Mm. Hello. You're on the Rocks Radio Show. Hello. Hi. Yes. Um, my name is Sean Chavez. I'm from Modesto, California. Hi, Sean. Hi. Hi. I just want to say I love On the Rocks. Oh, thank I you. I always look forward to watching your show. That's so sweet. And um, awesome. yes, um, I want to also um, ask two questions. If, if one for you and one for Eddie Danger. Yes, okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Okay, so um, for my first question for you, um, what is, is there a guest or celebrity that you hope that hasn't been on your show yet appears? Oh, Jessica Lang. In two seconds, I don't even think about it. Jessica Lang. Jessica Lang, Jessica Lang, Jessica Lang. <laughs> oh, okay, definitely. Yes, we definitely got to see that. There yeah, yeah. Uh, and then my second, oh, sorry. Um, then my second question is for Eddie Danger. Yes. I'm here. Hello. Okay. Fire in the disco. <laughs> Fire in the Taco Bell. I, I just want to say I'm also a big fan of you, Eddie Danger, since you've been on Hey Queen. Aww. You're my favorite go go dancer you. out of everyone. Oh, that's so sweet. I just to say that. Yeah, we, ju we just filmed some really fun stuff today, so that's coming out. With a big guest, by the way, oh, which I cannot it's, say. It's huge. It's it's going to be major. <laughs> it's a moment. I, and I left yeah, my, my outfit at the studio. I'm all mad about that. I'm trying to get one of the producers to. Johnny should send it to you. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. I'm just going to have somebody throw it on the balcony of where I'm staying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hope that I can maybe like like figure it out. So anyway, how are you doing? Great, I'm doing great. Um, I just want to say, um, since it, since you're not going to be on Hey Queen, you know, after your last episode, is there any other upcoming projects that we can look forward to for you? I, well, it's it, it gets to be a lot to fly out to Los Angeles to do these gigs, and um, I, I don't really know if I'm going to be on future episodes. It's really up in the air. Like, if they say that they have, like, an interesting guest coming up, and it's something that I could really put together and make a moment, I would love to be, like, flying back out here and doing this. But it's kind of it, – I need to bang out a lot of episodes while I'm out here, you know, because if I, like – this works but like if you've noticed in the past like i've done like a holiday show or like a like a summer s a show or something it's not really in the regular um uh uh, uh seasons you know so um <clears throat> 
I don't know. It's just it, it, it's kind of a situation to fly from Washington, D.C. out here. So I'm hoping to come back and do an episode, but it has to be something that I can make more of a moment. Also, we're on, like, um, about Out TV. Out and TV in yes. Canada. Netflix it, it, yeah, just released. Canada Air and all that. And, the episodes and, are streaming out of control. It's, it's getting great. so many clicks. And yeah. I'm really loving it. But the thing is, like, with Go-Go Dancing, um, I – uh, it shifted into a way that, like, I don't know if they're um, uh, a little scared of having go-go dancers on. Because if you've noticed, recently they've had a, a fuck ton of, like, like three guys on it all at once. And, like, they monetize on YouTube. So you can't be doing that. It looks yes, porn- I it, noticed that. You're right. It looks pornographic if you have, like, uh, 17 guys, like, humping all over a drag queen, you know? <laughs> So I'm I'm thinking yeah, that I, yeah yeah I'm thinking that like maybe in the future um it would it would be more of a situation like the one we did right like today was fucking amazing and it would be more of that like more I do shtick you know like I'm feeding mm-hmm. chicken to Stacy Lane Matthews you know like I I need to know yeah, exactly that was a good one yeah it was real wacky but it's, maybe you should be feeding meal prep. <laughs> Maybe I should oh. just be feeding you chicken right now. Oh, God, I would love it. I'm on a diet. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, we love Eddie Danger so Thank much. You. Uh, Thank we're, you. We're, we're going to talk more about his career, how we got started, and what's up ahead for Eddie Danger. So so, so stay tuned. Um, also from the chat room, uh, the thank you. Bye from Modesto. Uh, Jennifer Salinas loves your uh, pun, Kurt. It was great. We only got one comment for that. And Bobby Trendy <laughs> is in the chat room, by the way. Oh, hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. I saw him last night. Well, that's, you probably left something at his house, too. <clears throat> Get some penicillin, Bobby. <laughs> All right, let me formally introduce our panel for today. Eddie Danger, you've seen Eddie Danger on Netflix's Hey Queen. You've seen him on the Howard Stern Show. You've seen him make appearances around the nation at literally every single club. You've drooled over his Too Hot for TV Instagram. You probably have watched his adult films a few times, no matter what team you swing for. Beyond his on-screen persona, he is an author and musician. Uh, While studying abroad in Mexico, Eddie conceived his first poetry collection, Crimson and Caramel, followed up by The Maniac in the Coffee Shop, which is a narrative of his travels, available on Amazon. Amazon, by the way, he has been a musician from middle school, having played in a Metallica tribute band in middle school, (laughs) and most recently with Black Clover, an experimental rock band uh, with a number of incarnations and recordings. As a young entrepreneur, he has effectively marketed himself as a modern media man. Please welcome Eddie Danger. I, thank you for the applause. Yes. I appreciate it. Huge studio here. Yes. Uh, Kayla Methven, entrepreneur Kayla, might be a KFC heiress. Her family owned Rainbow Chicken Unlimited, a South African company that one time supplied 90% of KFC's chicken. Uh, but socialite Kayla is a success in her own right. She now runs two high end lingerie brands, uh, Madame Methven and Lactrodectus. Um, her interest in haute couture was inspired in Paris at the age of 16 while interning at a Paris fashion show held at the Tocadero. Uh, she trained at the Art of Design from the Distinguished Fashion Institute, Esmond, went on to earn a master's degree from the International Fashion Academy, Paris, completed advanced training at Polymoto in Florence. Uh, she has won international designer, haute couture, and lingerie twice. She was also awarded the most dynamic woman of the year by Angelino Magazine and was also featured on the cover of South Africa Maxim. I used to read Maxim, by the way. I have boxes of Maxim I'm in my sorry, day. sorry, I won five awards. Uh, okay. Well, and I have an MBA. <laughs> well, we're not done yet, girl. She also won International Design Award in Prento Potier for lingerie twice. So that added to that. That makes it five. Okay, girl. There you go. She empowers women <laughs> through fashion, and her Instagram reads like a Hollywood dream. She has dressed celebs, including Demi Lovato, the Kardashians, Catherine McPhee, the Housewives of Beverly Hills. Please welcome Kayla Methvin. Thank you. Masters. Catherine McPhee. How about that? Mm-hmm. She needed a little sprucing up. Did you have a video with her, too? No, I, did. <laughs> I never fucked Catherine McPhee. Oh, okay. But I would. Okay. Her, her career did. Um, oh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I love Catherine. That was just a joke. Please, no hate email. Uh, Vinny Merrill is CEO and founder of Lucky Soul. Lucky Soul CBD is a healthy living brand dedicated to making premium hemp products that are good for your mind, body, and soul. Every product purchase helps grant wishes for children in need and supports the fight against cancer. And when I say every product, I do mean every product from clothing to candles to skincare to sports body care to pet care. Two Water, which he brought, which we're going to talk about, you are covered. Uh, You have seen Lucky Soul at every major celeb event, including the Oscars Gifting Suite, where we met. I was at home (laughs) empty-handed. 
Oh, no. That's not my fault. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Jen Salinas told me to say that. Uh, lucky soul is defined by three souls, the rebel soul, the spiritual soul, and the warrior soul. Which one are you? Please welcome Vinnie Merrill. Yay. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Thank hey, thanks for the gift, by the way. These are awesome. Oh, I can't wait to dig into this. Well, we're going to talk about because I don't know whether I should drink it or not. No, you should drink it. Absolutely oh, okay. drink you it. You got to try yeah. it. So, like, calm me down. Um, it's going to really take away excited. the alcohol effect. Oh, right. well, so you might want to wait. For yeah, that, no, that no, no, CBD no. one. But I'm really excited to have you guys because, like I said, th at the start of the show, you guys couldn't be more different, but you all are successfully hitting your brand. The minute I see your logo or see one of your videos, I know exactly what your brand encapsulates, uh, which is a hard feat in today's marketing nightmare that is social media, mass uh, saturation. I mean, there's so much. Um, I want to talk about... Uh, what are the biggest obstacles as a brand owner in today's market? Because um, that's a heavy that. thing. We're going to start I off heavy because... I have several um, segregated audiences. You Because I work for straight porn, I do gay porn, and I also do like, um, like you know, the carrying on. I'm like a, I'm a dancer or whatever. So you have to kind of balance, like, how much money are you willing to nudge out of people? You know, probably not that much. But also, like, I'm, I, I kind of want to be sensitive to my customer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm never really trying to be greedy. I'll take a gig for, like, 100 bucks. I'm fine Say with that. that. Oh, my God. Now you've said I it. You're going to get I, so many $100 well, gigs. Listen, I, I don't give a fuck. But it, it comes down to it. It's just kind of like I like to see my people. You know, like, the people that follow me and support me and carry on with me, like, let's have fun. You know what I mean? Like, but if, they're, if they're willing to overlook the fact that I, like, ride that tie between gay and straight porn, like, you're family to me. But there's also the brand that you have, such a, a, as you also are a consummate author. You also are right. a musician. Visible. So you have different varied brands. Yes. Right now, the one, because Instagram is so hot right now, of course, is the visual, mm -hmm. which is what you've done yes. with your body. Well, with with um, it all kind of feeds into itself. Because at this point, I'm working on this book. It's like 700 pages right now. And it's going to be... I think it's going to be successful in terms of the fact that there's so much stupid fuckery going on. Sorry. Um, there's so Stuffery. much. There's so much nonsense <laughs> going on with it because I'm like I'm in a position where I get to kind of uh, experience the world in a certain way that most people don't because they think they're elevated. They think they're above it. But I'm okay with that because like I'm in the adult industry. I'm willing to mess around with the raccoons. You know what I mean? Like I get to see the subterranean world and. I can kind of like elevate that and I could I could show the beauty in it, you know, and that's what I'm working on right now. So if you're talking about intellectual work, I'm getting to that. But it's just going to have to take a little bit of struggle to get there, you know, just to make it like perfect, authentic. Well, and, you know, from the uh, from the adult film stars that we've had on the show. Right. There's a whole industry there, but you have to be as smart of the business aspect as your on camera work. Because right. that's about 80% of your business is the actual nuts and bolts of it. They so make to speak. overnight <laughs> <laughs> nuts and bolts. See they, what I did there. they make overnight successes. And in, in the gay porn world, they turn somebody into a big star overnight. And I'm not really into that. I don't want to like carry on in the fr like the fraternity that's existing right yes. now. I don't want to exactly what you're talking about. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm okay with taking time. Like I just did like a, a porn shoot in Aruba. Um, very experimental moment and it was like it was it was a lot to deal with but I got some really great material from my book that I'm working on so it's kind of like I can take the the, the nonsense I'll, I'll deal with that all right uh, now for your guys's aspect in terms of brand and again such different arenas but there's obstacles in today's market that that exist what would you say is the biggest obstacle you have in maintaining your brand because you guys have created your brand there's no doubt i would say for me probably you know my team consists of hundreds of people but there's probably 30 of them that i work with directly mm. and that's really an obstacle just every day getting up and dealing with the emails and dealing with the calls and just making every making sure that everything is in line you know and it's just it's a lot of work especially i own five brands actually and i'm in 16 stores worldwide so it's um Always making sure that, you, of course, that your clients are happy. You know, it's making sure that your stuff delivers on time, that the factories are on time, and always coming out with something new for the audience. You know, like right now we have a new collection coming out, Meth Head, 
uh, which will be touching more to the uh, rave EDM side. I love it. And and this is something which has not been done before. It lingerie has not does, been done. Lingerie has not existed yet in and, the rave world. And the rave culture still thrives. You know, we think of rave as, you know, a, a, a decade or so ago. That is not true at all. In fact, raves have become more age inclusive mm -hmm. where you have different age groups that are now congregating you have straight gay coming to raves and there's never been other than remember those big pants what you guys are too young uh, trip pants <laughs> yeah i yeah. used to wear those by the way yeah. to school but there hasn't been like uh the higher end touch to the whole rave community well which that's, the money is there by the way that's yeah those I are the pants no the, it's the big pants kurt Pull up the trip pants. Yeah, yeah there, there we go. go. That's it. Yeah. I used to own them from Hot Topic because, you know, I was in school. I had, <laughs> I had, I had a budget. Yeah, Hot yeah. Topic. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh, so as I was saying, yeah. Um, so it's more of a couture EDM line. You know, we have different sections to it. Uh, you have your affordable line, which, you know, it's for a girl that is not looking to look like everyone else. Yeah. So I got a little tired of the... Um, Women just sticking some stickers on her bosoms and, you know, wearing fishnet stockings and some feathered boots, I guess. And I, <laughs> I, I love how you say the feathered boots. I and guess. I'm like, I said, well, look, if you're going to party and rave and you're going to roll, you might as well roll right. Yeah. You know? Roll right. I mean. That's I'm, like a hashtag right there. I mean, roll right. I'm French, so I mean, it, you know, I do everything very bourgeoisie. Yeah. And if it's not done right, then I don't do it at all. So, I mean, honey, if you're going to go rave for three days, at least look good while doing it. <laughs> so, welcome to the Couture EDM world that I'm going to be bringing out. So, my collection launches in uh, August. So, we're going to be having a fashion show June 22nd. Am I invited? Uh, one week prior before. I'm going to be announcing the location and all the VIPs that will Girl, be attending. Girl, if I'm not there, we're going to have problems. And then we're going to have <laughs> September Fashion Week in Paris. So, I'm very excited about that as well. It's very, um, DJs can wear it, influencers can wear it, celebrities can wear it, they love to rave. It's made for Coachella, it's made for Tomorrowland, it's made for EDC Las Vegas, you know, like, it, it's really made for if you just want to look good. <laughs> but when you look at your design, you know right away that you're seeing a Kayla-influenced design. I gave you some content. Do you have any of that? We've been playing it, girl, while you've been talking on there. No, we, we, we are going to play, but we've been sh showing stuff from the fashion <laughs> show. We're actually going to take a peek at some video of, of Kayla. Oh, my God. Um, I mean, he, here's, here's the fashion show. I mean, and what I love about you, which is probably why you, you know, you have to focus on what you're doing and you can't pay attention to the 300 people working for you, is you wear your fashion. You represent your fashion in every breath that you take. Um, yeah. To the last job. And, and you look good. Let's take a peek at, at some of the footage of uh, Madame Methvin. And I get so jealous when I see all of your content because I was like, girl, I just want to hang out with you for like two seconds. You're more than welcome to. <laughs> and you have such a touch on what you want your brand. So how would you describe this style? Like if somebody say, describe what, what, what your fashion line is, like how would you describe it? I would describe that piece was very, very particular, but um, in what I'm doing in mainstream, it's very, it glows in the dark, number one. It's very customizing to the woman's body and it fits all bodies of every woman. That's what I love. Girl, big girls need love too. Boop, boop. Yes, we do. Every <laughs> size, which is great. And um, it's just flirtatious. It's fun. You look good. And you're there to have a good time. And that's really what I really want to bring to the rave world in EDM, you know? 
Well, that's really fancified the experience. You know, there's so many lines out there I I in the gay world too. There's so many gay underwear lines. It's like, well, what is sexy anymore? It's like when you elevate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You be like, I'm so into my body and how I'm so into you that I'm going to elevate this whole experience, which I love. And Wait, people send you underwear two times a day. You don't want to wear a banana hammock. That's not a good look when you take off your pants. It's not cute. No, having a big flappy. No, no, it's it's just too much. <laughs> It's like wearing a like crazy push-up bra, and then you take it off, and it's like, what's underneath Why'd you that? look at Kurt when you said that? <laughs> I, I, Kurt's worn a push-up bra. I heard him laugh, so I was trying to <laughs> engage with my man who's supposed to be throwing some... Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. there you go. <laughs> what, yeah. Throw some sound effects in there, too. Give me a squirt, like a... Uh, I didn't anyway. have a squirt. Yeah, but... No, we're, no, we're not anyway. Um, and... If it, what was th no, Kurt? Not on my show. It's we, like whale we do not sounds. do that. Yeah. <laughs> can, Kurt, can I get a sexy sound? Oh, 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 I oh he you. has a sexy sound oh, for I'll you. you. Now, Vinny, with the whole CBD world, how do you, we're talking about obstacles and branding? How do you set Lucky Soul apart from? Oh, that's your sexy sound. Perfect. Oh, I, I, was like, I, think, what the I hell? think that's his yeah. sound. <laughs> that's oh, not my yeah. sound. <laughs> that's when he called and said he was outside smoking. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> we got a question from the chat room, Kayla, that we're, you're going to answer in just a few minutes. All right. So to pretty much answer your question, um, like you actually, I came from apparel. Uh, I mean, my whole background's kind of been in apparel. Mm -hmm. And we started out making apparel for NBA teams. Actually, the Lakers was one of our first accounts. Oh, lovely. And then we just kind of started moving. That's huge, by the way. Yeah, they uh, the NBA, I got my end of season call about a week ago, and they was like, so what are you doing with the CBD? And they haven't really authorized CBD in the NBA yet. So Oh, because of the, it's, the drug testing. Yes. So uh, it's actually an interesting sense. situation because they're like, we're on your website right now, and we don't know how you're going to do this. And I'm like, just be patient. You know, give me some time. Let me work through this. Um, it's new for everybody. But – I think the cool thing about what I'm doing is I have a sports crowd. I have friends who are NBA athletes, and we're trying to do something to help them. But at the same time, I'm trying to take what I've been doing and introduce it to people in the Midwest who don't really know about CBD and the benefits. Everybody They're think, not into the L.A. culture. Yeah, where everybody think it's mm -hmm. marijuana. And so now I'm constantly educating people on it doesn't make you, it doesn't get you high. So, Vinny, I'm going to be honest with you. I, uh, I've smoked pot a couple of times, you know, I act like a fool on it. So to me, my only <laughs> education, and I didn't do that much research on CBD on purpose because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't know exactly what CBD means, don't know what hemp infused products mean. They don't know that, but nobody wants to appear like the uncool kid who didn't do drugs <laughs> and be like, is it going to make me high? Am I going to get the munchies? Like, what is CBD? And, and, and. Why are there products now w with You know it? what I find really interesting is everyone in AA is now doing CBD. Yeah. I did not. My, one of so my that, best friends. So that's very interesting to me yeah. as well. Like, I'm like, okay, so you're not allowed to get high, but you can get high off of this because it's organic. Okay. Well, here's the thing. The best way I can explain it to people is in cannabis, you have two plants. Okay. You have hemp, which is non-psychoactive, um, and you have cannabinoids which is what CBD is coming from, right? And then you have marijuana, which is psychoactive. So you have the THC and the CBD. I never knew that. I didn't yeah, know a lot that. of people didn't know that. Um, yeah. So when I first got into it, I had to go and explain this to make a wish. And they're like, wait, hold on, what, what, are, you, what are you doing here? We're over here granting wishes. And you over here now, you're trying to go get people high? <laughs> <laughs> I know many people's wishes in LA would be to get oh high, by the way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they was like, we don't know how this is going to work with the kids. So you're going to have to really explain this to us. So I had to really go educate myself and learn mm -hmm. and be able to present it in a way so that everybody can understand. Oh. Um, even parents um, yeah. with young children, especially ones that we're, you know, we're getting call, uh, emailed about or called about who have seizures. You yeah. know, we got to be oh. able to explain that to them that, you know, you can take a tincture and when your child is having a seizure, you know, whether it's 600 milligrams or 1,000, and you can put it on their tongue, and in a matter of 20 to 30 seconds, they'll start seeing some type of relief. Now, let me make this clear. I'm not making any claims, FDA, so please do not come after me. But <laughs> 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 there's another gray area that we're constantly trying to work through right now. Um, even though technically CBD ingestibles, FDA says is legal, but, you know, they're letting people kind of work through it. 
and we're one of those brands that, you know, I came out with this water in June of 2018. And the very first thing I saw, I had like eight products. And I had eight products. Everybody had a tincture. Everybody had a muscle relief gel. Everybody had a lotion. Um, and then everybody had a lip balm. A lube. Yes. We do have a personal. But you guys we, do have, yes. We have I do that know too. you yeah. have, yes. We, we, we've elevated it a little bit, though. Um, but one of the things that I noticed was, I was like, nobody's doing a water. Why is that? And I'm one of those people, like, I don't want to do what everybody else I is doing. I think they did. Um, I'm so sorry to interrupt my love. I think they did it at this restaurant. What, what, what is that uh, vegan restaurant right on West Hollywood? You're looking at me like I know <laughs> where a vegan restaurant <laughs> is. Mexican. It's really good. Oh, because I'm Mexican? Kayla! Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I'm teasing yeah. with you. I don't know where vegan so anyway, nothing is. They were putting CBD oil with alcohol and then they oh. banned it. Well, see, that's a problem. And that's what happened. So yeah. I, I think it's really great that you came out with this water. So Vinny, explain it because I don't know what adding CBD to water does. Like okay. to me, like I said, we were all joking at the Oscar suite, like, oh, we're gonna get high, can't drive after this. No, so <laughs> this water is interesting. Um, there's a lot of, there's CBD waters out there and what people are doing is actually adding water soluble drops into the water. Um, we actually take the oil, the CBD oil, we mix it in a solution, which is the only way you can infuse it with fulvic acid. This is 10 pH, this is alkaline wow. water. Um, CBD can't survive in any type of environment. So you have to have a scientist or water expert that knows how to manipulate minerals. So what happens, you take all the vitamins, nutrients, and minerals, and terpenes, and everything from the hemp plant, and you infuse it into the fulvic acid. And basically what this does, this is act as an actual hangover drink. Oh, you can okay. drink this before you go out, did and you, you next just spoke my language fine. right now? Yeah, this, not making any claims, this water can do a lot of different things from toning the face. Mm. Um, so if I splash my face with it, will I look younger? It's an internal yeah, thing, right? It, 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 <laughs> some, Come on, you yeah, got it. probably take some time. <laughs> um, we do have a spray coming out with this water. Okay, oh, there you that's go. That's actually in the works. Um, I'm still interested in this hangover thing because... As yeah, I get yeah. older, that's become a problem for me. And you know, my whole, my, my brand is on the rock. So when I go to my events, drinks, 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 because mm -hmm. that's my brand. But then the next morning I have a business meeting. As all of us here know, we have a business meeting at 9 a.m. or we have to talk to international at a whole different time. So what yeah. do you experience with your hangover? Um, God, so much. <laughs> so Sadness, you get older. depression, <laughs> well, <I> mean, crying, <laughs> that's vomiting. <laughs> It's All like that. you wake up and you you just feel like crap and you just feel lethargic and you just don't want to do anything. Um, it, you just feel icky. I, I don't know how, how okay. else to explain it. So one of the cool things about this drink is with the fulvic acid, once it gets inside your system, right, you have, like when you drink alcohol, everything sits in your gut. <laughs> well, so there's a lot that's when there's things start <laughs> to, to turn. Right. I have yeah. top shelf and I have bottom <laughs> shelf right here. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then it gets into your bloodstream. So what this does actually is when you drink it, your body starts absorbing it immediately. Uh -huh. So whenever you drink alcohol afterwards, it'll just automatically cause it to flush. It won't allow it to sit there. So that's one of the cool benefits of having fulvic acid in this drink. But not only that, the hemp actually helps with hangovers and it helps with nausea. So you'll see women oh, wow. who are doing hemp, CBD oil, you know, when they're pregnant to kind of help counter that. Wow. So, you know, there's a lot of research out there. Um, they've been doing CBD in Israel forever. Colleges are now starting to get into the CBD research. Um, we work with some scientists from Texas A&M. Um, so we have a really good team and we have a really good water. And luckily uh, Kroger just accepted us um, into Kroger, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Are you um, kidding? Let's celebrate yeah. that. So, yeah, you like your Yeah, yeah. 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 So, All right, there you go, yeah. Kroger. Kroger, are you I kidding? Love that shit. That's great. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we're 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 a little bit ahead of a lot of people right now, um, and you have to have in this industry, you have to have a hero product, otherwise you're going to be on the same road Ooh. with everybody else. And I'm over here, and I'm trying to run right, while everybody's still going left and trying to do the independence. And I, the first thing I noticed was. And we got to go hit the national accounts because they're the ones who are sitting back and waiting to see who's doing what. And I just took it straight to them. We presented our water. We presented this whole line. Uh, we got a great PR team. And they was like, how are you doing all this? And you ain't even sold an independent stores yet. And think about that. We ain't sold to no independent stores. 
But yeah, we got picked up by Kroger, and um, we got a couple other big things in the play um, that I can't say right now, but they'll probably be coming out later. The whole business world is just so weird because you never know what's going to hit, who's going to respond. Right. It's such a crapshoot, like which kombucha. makes me a business owner. It's kind of like kombucha, right? That's it. Because it's I fermented, hate right? But yeah. kombucha. No, but it's like kind of the same business, right? That's Something exactly. that's Who alternative and interesting. Yep. That's cool that you yeah, got it's, that. A lot of people just didn't know. I mean, even now, we talk to people and like, what? I didn't know there's a CBD water. And then they just start asking questions. And once they start learning about benefits, it's like you kind of get them hooked. I want right. to try it. Like, we just launched on Amazon literally four days ago. And we sold through most of the water. And I wasn't expecting that. Because I was like, first of all, nobody even knew we was on Amazon. We didn't promote it. We didn't do nothing. And then I get an email alert. Ding, 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 ding. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but that has to be a, an amazing moment. And for all of us as, as brand owners, the first moment, do you guys remember the first moment where your brand, you realized people were buying into it. And it was like your first, like, I'm famous moment. Do you remember what that moment was like? I remember my first sale, yeah. That was uh, like a decade ago. When, when was it like, and what was, was your like your response to it? It was in Paris after the uh, Mar Marion West Westwood uh, fashion show. I actually just sold it right there in the crowd. Um, some woman just came up to me and was like, can I grab the jacket? And I'm like, yeah, of course you can. And it was really great. So um, it was a great feeling, you know? And that's like, what keeps you going on. But you know what yeah. keeps you going on even more? It's like, it's when you get the letters and the emails and you get the fans and then you get the videos. And that's well, it's, it's because I think you are so positive. And the question we got from the chat room is what motivates you and inspires your creativity? You know, it's really making people fall in love again. With themselves, I think. With themselves as a couple together. You know, find me a couple. Well, you know, single. I could find you a couple easily that are willing to hang. <laughs> no, with I you. meant like yes. like make me a couple. Hashtag single forever. <laughs> Hashtag twenty cats. Right. <laughs> no, I think what really inspires me is you know when I was younger, my, my mother was seriously very ill. Yes. So um, I do know that. I promised her, you know, that I would do something very um, loving for this world. You know, and, uh, sadly she passed away at a very young age. I said, you know, I'm going to try and use my talents wisely. So I did all my schooling, etc. And I wanted to make people happy. And I know that goes a lot into the adult world where, you know, love can be very tricky at certain times. You know, it's good. It's either good. It's a love is a word is so weird that we it's the English language has one word. Well, it's for like love. vodka, right? It's good. And then oh. you wake up in the morning and you have a Speaking hangover. Not if you have lucky. So yes. <laughs> but I think my inspiration was um, I I remember when I was in Paris and I was I I saw this one guy and it was like love at first sight and um, I used the persuasion of lingerie to make him fall in love with me and that's when I kind of learned that I wanted to do that for other women and make other mm -hmm. women happy and other couples more engaged with themselves Makes sense. you know um, people who are going through divorces people who are having co problems in their marriage you know just a little spice up for the night. I'm sure you can probably help out with that. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, things are so sanitary on set. It's just like, hey, nice to meet you. Let's bang. Oh, by the way, I just realized the amount of um, uh, mango water you just put in your drink. That's 90% liquor right there. No, boo-boo. You, you don't even know what's happening here at, at On The Rocks. Um, right. uh, a question from the chat room. Uh, Nate wants to know, of any. explain the DSBG certification. There you um. go. I know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the thing, because uh, the whole oh idea of CBD hit, hits the market. Everybody's like, oh, God, we have to do okay. that. Let's put it in cereal. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm interested. I, I had a funny feeling you know, Matt I've was going to call in or go into the chat room just to get this one off. So here we go. Uh, uh, Nat is my... <laughs> <laughs> he's my, he's our VP of sales. Like, oh, hi, Nat. Hi, Nat. That is was a planted a, question. Okay. Do we get free samples? I, I have to see now that he. That's done, what we need. He done sent that message. I have to kind of tell this story. Real Absolutely. Quick. So, Nat came to me one day, um, and he was like, "I need you to use your brand name and your story for CBD." And I was like, "Man, what are you talking about?" And then so he kind of went into this whole thing where he was like you can help a lot of people yeah. like that's been his whole thing how can we take what you do and go help other people 
Absolutely. because the story and the message is there. And I think we all three have that in common. That's exactly right. That's right? why you three are here. Even though we come from different backgrounds, you know, we all do different things. Um, I think we all do it for a good reason. It's our um, passion. Yeah. So my guy, Nat, you know, he started telling his jokes and he's from Alabama. So he's very country. <laughs> and <laughs> he came up with this. <laughs> Basically, it's called this shit be good. I love that. That's what it is. And <laughs> every sellable. where we go, doesn't matter who we're talking to. He will throw that out and it will start people to laugh. And it's actually a good conversation starter because mm -hmm. it eases the moment right you Breaks know you don't want ice. everything to be all serious we can't always be serious sometimes you got to enjoy the moment and um he brings that to us whatever we do so i, I do love him for that even though he's he is country um actually i'm kind of country i'm too. sorry nat is your me. partner he's our vp of sales nat nat we kind of he, he kind of introduced the whole cbd thing to me country he's men a good are guy super yeah. good in my book. what are we talking about we actually country, we need to get him yeah. in this Nat. If he if he wears jeans Nat. and like a cowboy buckle, I'm all about it. I'm doing a there shout out to Nat. I don't know who you are, but <laughs> honestly, you seem like a very good guy, and you definitely get some free chicken. Definitely. Oh, he's gonna take you up on that. Okay, Trust that, me, he'll probably hit you up on Twitter or, or wherever he can get a hold of you. The way. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing about being a successful entrepreneur: we have to surround ourselves with positive people who believe and not only what we're doing, but believe in themselves. Because we don't need people that want to leech off of our success or yes. our energy. And Ooh. it's so dangerous because we meet 10 people a day. Hey, I'd love to help you. I have some great ideas. Here's my card, here's my card. And especially, you get to get out of LA. But when you're saturated in LA, it's, it's a constant thing where I, you don't know. I couldn't live here, absolutely. I was gonna, I and what are the not, questions we got from could, your fans is, why I, could, you I could never live here. But here's the thing. Yeah. Career in L.A., you have to be in L.A. for, I mean, you, if you have in 20 LA, meetings a day. It, it's a very, it's a city where it's one of the hardest cities in the world. I don't want somebody looking over my shoulder when they have a conversation with me looking for the I next biggest celebrity. I hate that. I don't give a fuck. Like, I, like but literally, for career wise, the same. You're, you're, I mean, like, the success is here for a, a reason. But I think what she said is, like, the people that are really passionate and will wade through the obstacles in LA or Southern California, they're the winners because they're willing to say, I love my product or my... What makes me feel really accomplished is that when you're in the hardest city and when you can ac accomplish it, and especially when he was saying you have 10 people a day hating on you, and in my case, it's like 200. <laughs> <laughs> And you have, for example, I'm sure you've gone through this. You get lawsuits, you get complaints, you get you get stuff stolen, you get inventory gone, you get. I'm sure. Or you, your competitors create exactly profiles, and we have. To and you get a lot of hate stuff on Instagram too. So you wake up in the morning, you have your coffee, and the first thing is you look at your emails and don't think it's a pretty email. <laughs> Don't ever think that it's like, oh, hey, I love you. What's going on, Kayla? I'd love to order a diamond bra right now and uh, <laughs> and send you a check right okay. away. It's now, right. now, it's yeah. more like, it's more like, um, sorry, sweetie, your inventory stuck in uh, a Rosarita in Mexico. Uh, uh, we need you to get down here right away. It's like, I wore your product and my husband still left me. Girl, oh. it was that attitude. And then you got to call <laughs> your project <laughs> manager and then that, that person has to call somebody to go down there mm. and... It, it, it's 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 quite a headache, but you know what? It's a hustle. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, I say that ninety percent of it is really hard, but that ten percent is so much gratitude that you get at the end of it for knowing that you did it. And Eddie, you and I have bonded over uh, the interview I did. Oh, it's rapid fire. Okay, yes, Kurt, and 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 in like two seconds, but real right. fast, we bonded over your interview with Instinct Magazine, okay. where we like I really got to know you like beyond the persona right and i do know la is not anything what you attribute yourself to in okay. terms of like relationships and the fakeness well, and all that. i gotta tell you when i got here it was endless family like the second i landed it, somebody was there to say hi to me to welcome me I, I i had gotten off of like 24 hours of flying from fucking aruba out here and like I'm on a different time zone. I'm tired. You mean as fuck. effing Aruba, as in like Aruba, I'm or like so you sorry. effed Aruba? No. <laughs> Might as well. No, there's be like both. Yeah, I gotta yeah. tell okay, you. Okay, okay. But either way, so I I, I was like dry, walking down the road, bringing my like a luggage on my back. I'm like dragging a suitcase, and I got stopped. And I was like, Oh, I know you. I know you. I know you. And every club that I walked past, 
all my friends were there. So Los Angeles is a very like it's 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 family to me. But I don't know if I could survive out here. You know what I mean? You're either like, made for LA or you're not. No, I'm not. I'm certainly not. Yeah, I, but, I'm not made for New York. But the career opportunities could happen every single day. And if you're out of town, I right. feel like I would rather be a big fish in a small pond. That's like, interesting. Like be, it's the best business model because like you have like it's a it's a built in fan base. Like we're gonna drag this like So you wanna be famous in Mississippi. I would I would take it. I'm going to Biloxi, Mississippi oh. um in, in a you. few weeks and I'm totally cool <laughs> with that. I love it. I love people. You know what I mean? Like so I don't need this carrying on about like like the Met Gala. I don't need to be there. I'm okay being the guy that's from D C that they drag out and like and well, DC is not really. schlepping it either, by the way. It's not, but I mean we don't have any like go go dancers or, or porn boys there, really. But that's an interesting look at things because you have established your brand. You're right. in like two different cities every single week. Yeah. Like and I'm not even exaggerating. And I have a day job. I I'm I'm functioning as like a computer programmer also. So Which is and so you're funny writing a book. Yes. Well, I mean, that's on the side. It's more like the as the stories come in, as the nonsense happens, that's when the the book I- exists. But it's not like something that I'm like really pushing right now. I'll probably get to it when I'm like 50 years old. But once <laughs> everything is good, the the punchlines are there, and this and the, the story arc is something remarkable. But I mean, I'm I've been studying enough literature to know that I should just not do something when it's not good you know what i mean he knows when he's not the smartest man in the room right uh, and i love that you know what you want your brand to be and i think yeah. that's what made you guys successful too is you know what your brand is going to be and who's going to react to it all right we got our rapid fire uh, real fast and we're just going to go around the room and rapid fire oh my god um who was your first kiss Vinny. oh damn um shit that was such a long time ago i was like <laughs> chase turner Amber Kirby. Oh, you know. Chase I don't Turner? even know. That's a good. I don't even know. I was like, yeah, I remember your grade. first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I was sixth grade or Am something. Am I going to get sued for saying that? Well, no. I'm a laundry yeah. designer. I believe in like love and fantasies and butterflies. Yeah, and but like our first kiss was some stupid. I was, I was like six That's years why old. I don't. Remember. I was watching Shrek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys, and you don't remember it today. No, because it was Vinny, nothing. That's not very romantic. I think I was on. The only thing I remember is I was on the playground. <laughs> it was during recess. That okay, was it. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's say uh, superhero you would want to be, male or female. Poison Ivy. Uh, done. I could totally see with that. Thank you. You could have done better costumes in that stupid Batman movie. But <laughs> Thank you, baby. Yeah. But with the gorilla moment. No. The, mm. There's a no forgiving moment. Oh, that gorilla some... moment was epic. <laughs> it was. It was inspired by a bro- like a very legendary burlesque I mean, moment. She's stripping. You should love it. Well, yeah, they incorporated it into cabaret. <laughs> <laughs> but it was legendary, and I've done that routine myself. I had a gorilla suit, and I tore off. But anyway, yes, so I know. Right. I've seen everything you've done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like the Incredible Hulk. Oh, I could see I can that. See that. A gentle oh, giant. Can see that. I... Because it's a gentle giant. Yeah. We know the Incredible Hulk is mm-hmm. brawn to look at, but there's like a. Well, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have an answer for this. Of course you do. My I son. see you as Ted. Okay, I'll take Ted. I don't because know because he's that a Ted? cute bear that we all want to hug oh, and the love. Oh, the he's not a superhero though, girl. But, but he's, I think but like he's Ted still, Bundy. I'm like, are you gonna kill us? But he's still <laughs> <laughs> Ted Bundy. I'll take Ted Bundy over bear. that. Yeah, because yeah, but, but he's still just you know this crazy you know <laughs> funny you know. Kurt is so everyone, good. Like he's everyone already loves him. Yeah, but who doesn't love Ted? Oh, you know what though? Photos. Yeah, here is. See, that's you. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, Kayla. I would have to say, in some people's world, Ted is a superhero. I'm quite saying he, as pudgy do you as know that. How quite many yet, though. Just give me a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was a successful uh, right, rapid God, fire. God bless. What about you? Uh, God. Um, We're supposed to be rapid. Oh, uh, oh <laughs> did you see? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, I, I mean, I suffered there, too. Out. I would say it would be Deadpool, not for looks or anything, but because he's like, okay, we're doing this. Let me just like be sarcastic, and yeah. I'll still get the job done, because yeah. that's what I do. You right. can hire me at the post office and be like, you have a letter, don't we all? Here it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I would nail whatever I wanted uh, to do. Which you have done. <laughs> Are we talking about nailing people? No, I was making like a little... Uh, right. Ted does that. I got so many he emails. the grocery woman, remember? <clears throat> yes. I didn't. Amanda Seyfried. Yeah. No, uh, No, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, nobody wants to mar marry Amanda Seyfried. <coughs> I want to talk about, we got so many uh, emails in different ways about the origins of who made you who you are because, because of Instagram, because of Facebook, because we see the uh, successful person. And Vinny, you have nothing personal on any social media or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if you watch sports. I don't know what kind of food you like. I don't even know if you ordered Postmates from Papa John's. Like, I know nothing <laughs> about you. What I do know is that you have established a successful line. Um, but we do know things about you guys because you, you have been very open with certain interviews. And so I really, the creation, and this is what younger business people that I got emails from are so interested. And Kayla, I, I would like to start with you if you don't mind. I know, and I'm going to share a lot. And if you don't want me to share, then you say no, don't. No, you're, you're fine. <sighs> Went from being the third uh, wealthiest family in South Af Africa, being in Beverly Hills, and then at a very young age, at 14, which is such a delicate age, having to make a decision, uh, do I become a foster kid? Do I go to France and live in a one-bedroom apartment? You had to make that decision. And you lived that life for a while. Yes, I did. I would love for you to talk about that and also how, th how you were able to emerge from that. Because some people wouldn't make that decision. There's only one thing I can say. God. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's been my he's been my saver. You know, I've always known that I've been uh, I've always wanted more in my life, and I knew that it was only just a, a, for a limited a time. So, you know, I moved to France when I was fourteen to live with my father, and you know, I left obviously when I was seventeen to start my studies. So it was only a limited time. Um, I worked five jobs. I just lived you lived in a one bedroom apartment with, with seven people and I slept in the kitchen floor yes and the language was different for you everything was different you had all these challenges from yeah. being literally taken to school <laughs> like in a limo I, yeah I, I went from getting taken school to a limo to a two-hour train ride every day to working at a bakery shop to working at a McDonald's uh, to working at um, I worked at Sephora I worked at Mac I worked as a French uh, English tutor I've done a lot of those. I had many little side jobs, and all of those were just for me to buy lingerie for this guy and use them for the persuasion of love and lingerie. Because that's how much I believed in it. How do you emerge from an experience like, like that, though? Besides God, like... I did a lot of crying. I had a lot of emotional, you know, having to let go, you know. You know, you always need your mom at that point in your life, and you're, and you're there, and you're, you you realize that you can't give up that easily because that's just, you can't, you know? And like we were talking earlier about LA, only the strongest of the strong can yeah, stay here. That is, that is very true. And when I was laying on that kitchen floor, I said one day I'm gonna be the biggest designer. I'm not as big as Karl Lagerfeld and God rest his peace. You know, I'm not as big as Versace. I understand that and I love her. Big shout out to her, Donatella, I love I you. I love her. I love you. Um, but, you know, what I service today, from laying on that kitchen floor to making all of these hundreds of women happy, that has given me so much more back than I could have ever imagined in my life. And I think that's what my mother wanted. We did get the email, uh, success to you, because who do you share your success with? Your family is kind of not... That is true. Uh, my mother passed away, and I am not close at all with my father, but I do share a very close relationship with um, one of my very good friends and project managers, Brianna Jade. She's also known as the bridal queen of LA, who's sitting right here next to me. I love you. Girl, find me a groom. She's very pretty, by the way. Yeah, I gotta gorgeous. tell you. You've been saying that very since gorgeous. earlier. I'm gonna have to <laughs> put back. a space she's behind She's gorgeous. You. He's in town till Thursday. Uh, Hello. Brianna, I need you to, I need you to just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, microphone. I want to get to know this girl. You know, um, I'm sitting right here, Eddie. It's so oh rude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, after France, you know, I traveled a lot and I uh, went a little bit all over Europe, you know, doing my MBA. I, I lived in China for a bit. I lived in um, You've been everywhere. In Florence, you know, I lived in London. I did some studies in New York. And, and then when I graduated, you know, I entered for Vogue. And then after that, I came to LA. And there's been a lot of people, such as, you know, my first publicist who gave me a chance. Her name is Tash Terzan. She's the first woman to ever look me in the eye. 
and give me a chance when no one would take me. You know, there's been another guy, you know, when I signed with my first modeling agency, his name was Donnie at State, you know. He was, he brought me on and he was like, this girl's gonna be the next big thing and I really believe in her and uh, he's taken me really far. Um, my manager is someone I'm really close to and he's come to like a brother to me today and he's pushing me so far and I'm so blessed to have him. And my publicist, same same thing as well. She's an amazing woman who is really not let, let me, she won't let me go of my talent. Like I've tried moving this way or going to acting or going this way and, and she's, she's made me stay into where my genes and where my, my blood is. But what I do have to say is that I am fighting over a few reality shows that I'm picking right now. So uh, that reality is TV. To, that That's is, a whole other so conversation. You are going, so you are going to see something very fun very soon. So you're going to get to see the making of Meta Meth Fun. Oh, my God. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> <girl>. <laughs> Honey, just have it on the rocks. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. And so, like, Vinny, the start of all of this, I know nothing. I don't even, like we said, <laughs> what kind of kid were you in, in, in school? Were you in sports? Were you in debate team like who were you as a kid did you say debate team well yes no. hello no nah, i wasn't on debate team um, oh sorry we were very popular <laughs> <laughs> no as he a looks kid, like he would play football yes that's oh, God, i yes. did i actually um i pl started playing football in kindergarten see that's um, my job to know people's <laughs> bodies <laughs> yeah yeah, it, yeah my i purposely keep myself off instagram I'm like one of those people. You don't even have, I, I couldn't find you. Yeah, you're not going to really find, you're not going to no. find, and even if I did, you won't find nothing on me. Um, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just that way. Um, I don't know, being from Missouri, you know, we're, we kind of keep to ourselves. Missouri is an interesting place. And so when I came out here, it was like a whole new world. And I felt like I was just a stranger amongst all these people. Luckily. It's scary when you first come to LA. Yeah. Luckily I didn't come by myself. Um, when I graduated from college, my friend got drafted to the Lakers, and I was just in a unique situation. Your friend got drafted to the Lakers, yeah, so that, you got to a, go to all the cool parties and and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, me and Jack Nicholas used to. Oh, here hang we out. go, <laughs> throwing the names around. Here we are. Nope. Well, I was at Staples Center because um, he didn't talk to nobody, and I was that guy. Like I would go into the, in the family room, and I was just sitting there because I didn't know. I didn't really know people, and my friend was playing, so. Jack came over and he'd just be like, hey. <laughs> and we just sit there and we just start That's talking crazy. about nothing. It was, I didn't want anything from him. I didn't ask him about stuff. That's the key in LA. The minute you sit down and, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just to give you guys a little idea about me, I'll share this I on this show. I love seeing the outsiders. Um, I grew up, my dad, <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad left when I was born. Um, my mom had four kids and she couldn't really take care of all of us. And I knew that like in a fourth grade and I was playing basketball and I would remember like my coach would be like, are you, do you need something to eat? Like my family, it, it was weird given our situations because my mom was a victim of abuse, um, by her boyfriend slash husband which put us in a bunch of situations growing up that no kid or children should ever have to go through. Um, and I've seen things that no kid or children should ever have to see. Um, so a part of that kind of made me like be to myself. Um, and so when people ask me, why don't you talk that much? It's not that I don't want to, it's just that I don't like revealing a lot of stuff about me. Um, you know, everybody has a history, everybody has a past. And one of the things that, that I learned along the way is that sometimes people aren't going to be there to help you. Yes. You're going to have to figure out a people way. People that should be there to help you are not there. Yeah. You're going to have to figure out a way to navigate through life, sometimes on your own. You know, you're going to have cheerleaders and you're going to have people constantly telling you, oh, don't do this, don't do that. You know, you shouldn't go try this because they're basing it on their experience. But I truly believe that everybody has to have their own experience. And when I came across this, this is a true story, I swear to you. I was going through a hard time and it was on the eve of my birthday. And it's funny, I, I, you know, I believe in God and I pray a lot. And at that 
particular moment, I Amen. was just praying because I was really going through something. And on the eve of my birthday, I'll never forget, um, I was at work. And then, like, I started feeling weird. Like, I started getting this weird feeling. And I was like, I thought I was getting sick. So I left work. I went home. And it was, like, 7 o'clock in, in the evening. I knocked out. And I'm like, what the hell? And then all I remember is I woke up from a pitch black dream. And in this dream, all I heard was a voice that just said, lucky soul, over and over and over. So I woke up at 4 a.m. Like, what the hell is lucky soul? Never heard that voice again. I went online. I Googled because at that point, my mind, it was all in my mind. I Googled it. And I was like, I think his name is available. And I called my attorney. And next thing I know, here we are today. But I didn't have no vision. I didn't have nobody to tell me what I should do. I just started figuring it out. Okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? And then about three years later, if you look at the logo, it's actually an angel in disguise. We actually have the logo. Kurt, can you, can you play it? Oh, we got oh so it. that's, okay. So that's, yeah. So it's, a, it's an angel in disguise. So the top part of that is the teardrop from the symbol of life. And you, you can say it there, okay. Yeah. So you'll see how when I when we was doing this, it was just pieces. The wings actually came from the Phoenix, which is unstoppable force. Um, and then the bottom part is an infinity sign, which means it goes on and on forever. So somehow all the pieces. I never would have noticed that because I've seen your logo over yeah. and over. I so if you look at how all the pieces come together, at that point I was like, okay, there's some divine happening here. And now I'm just got to figure out what all this means. And the name of what Lucky Soul meant came actually after the logo. So Lucky Soul is basically someone who lets nothing stand in the way of reaching their goals or dreams in life, which is all of us. That's anybody and everybody. And if you understand what the brand is about, um, it's about faith, God, and helping people. It was never really about the money, even though some people look at it as, you know, let's go make some money. For me, it was always about those three things because that's what got me through all my obstacles that's what got me through all the situations I've been you know facing in life and I tell people this all the time and it's funny I'm gonna bring this up real quick um, everybody know who Nipsey Hussle is right yes okay so when I was working at that job Nipsey came in there and he came in there and his wife beat her on braids I never met the guy tattoos all over you know, and some sweat shorts cut off. And I noticed that he didn't talk to nobody. We was at a private club in downtown. Didn't talk to nobody. And nobody ever, never went up and talked to him. And I was like, I'm looking around. I'm like, why is nobody going to talk to this guy? Like, you know, he's human. So one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to go up and say something. And we started talking. And he was just like, you know, he started telling me what he does. He's like, yeah, I'm a rapper. You know, I was like, Really? I, ain't, I, I haven't heard of you or nothing like that, right? In my mind, I'm thinking that. But then he started telling me where he's from in Compton. I was like, okay. So now this story, I'm starting to get a little more out of. Like, I'm telling you guys about me. And one of the things that I respected about him was he was always about how could I do something to help people? This was before the marathon. But he always had that idea, like, you know, life is an ongoing journey. You know, it's not how you start. It's basically how you end up and how you finish. And I was like, man, man, you don't got that in common. Because I knew that in the beginning. I was like, we're all going to die. You can't take nothing with you. But when you die is what you leave behind. And that was the thing about me that I wanted people to understand. What are we going to leave behind? So that they remember you by. I think I got a little teary-eyed earlier. You know, what? this... It was really beautiful. That is so deep. It and, was. and Vinny, you know, the the website Lucky Brand stands on its own because no, no. you Lucky Soul. Lucky Soul. Don't say Lucky Brand. Lucky Ooh, Soul. Oh, those not are jeans. Lucky Brand. Oh, oh, honey. Don't ever say that oh. one. No, we are no, not no, feeling no, 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 Lucky no. Brand. No, but but Lucky Soul, like you share inspirational quotes. Um, and this is what I love about this show, is we never know what direction the show's gonna go. Right. And you know, you guys have such loud personalities and loud brands and I have to say when he wow. said it um, wasn't about the money I was just like you know that's how it started off for me yeah. it was just making it was just me wanting to fall in love you know <laughs> and, and making people happy and like I think that's really beautiful what you do mm. very just beautiful we still have to pay our bills but you guys have <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean but, no, no, but but right, right. Um, and Eddie your beginning yes. um, 
I have to attribute that to Miss Naomi Black in Norfolk, Virginia. She made me who I am today. It's, um, I'd say she, she just, like, manifested something. She was dating somebody at the moment. I just got out of grad school, and um, she was dating a, like, a modeling agent or something there are a lot of like like scam artists out there uh, she we was all know people that want to help us with our brand yeah. they're all out there she was dating yeah. a scam artist and i got um wrapped up in that because i was like i had newly found an invisalign moment where i could fix my smile and i was like okay i've never been popular before so he i got swept away in this modeling moment and um it just so happened that he asked me to be a uh, contestant in their student body contest, which is um, I, I like a college moment, you know, like it, it was like a like y- 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 like it's like a competition for money. So it was it was something like that. So I, I happened to win that. And then uh, I just decided to join the uh, male burlesque group, you know. It was uh, pretty disgusting, but... But that kind of, like, diverted your whole... Yes, it shattered the door. So, I mean, like, once you break through, like, like in, in terms of porn, the second you do it, it's, like, you're a part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And same with stripping. Like, the second you, like, decide you're going to be a porn, like, like a, a dancer, maybe, um, you're already a moment. Like, like, like you're gigged. That's yeah. your label. Like, if you enter CBD, okay, CBD, what you got? Or lingerie. Right. People, like, have a preconception about what lingerie is, and then they see your products, and it's a whole different thing than yeah. what they have uh, preconceived. You have an identity at that point, you know? Dido wants to know where they can hear your music live if... Well, we're not going back into the studio for a moment, but, like, I, I, I think um, there's... We're, we're talking about it. We have to, like, set up, like, a farm because I'm not willing to deal with like having to fly out to Los Angeles or like record anything that's outside of like my my reachable space. I think that's a big mistake. I, I also I, I don't really want to deal I don't want to work with anybody that's not in my band either. It's like so um, if somebody else is writing music for me, I don't like I don't want to get involved. I've got my four guys like I want to stick with them. You know what I mean? Like with music, they get me. I'm not going to have somebody else writing my music. I'm not going to have somebody else, like, kind of, like, organizing my life. I'm I'm fine. I, I like my people. And when they're ready to start recording again, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? I can't. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll take that. We got a bit more rapid fire. You can have drinks or smoke with anybody from history who has passed. Who would it be? Vinny, you first. Oh, shit. Um, you know what? I, I, I actually thought about this before Rosa I think, Parks I think it'd be kind of cool okay to smoke with Bob Marley oh <laughs> yes yes he would have I um yes and you said Rosa Parks I don't think she'd drink or smoke I think she'd be like yeah, I don't think she, yeah. Gloria Steinem absolutely oh she would she I smoked find, and drink can they be alive today beer. then it's gonna be Seth Rogen you know, he's funny because... Then it has to be him. I, I just don't know, like, how fun he'd actually be in real life. No, but Gloria Steinem. She could, she could cut you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you say to your 16-year-old self? Um, stay strong, hold in there. Um, you'll make it. You're beautiful. I love you. Mm-hmm. My 16-year-old self? What I would tell... Oh, my God. I'd tell myself... <laughs> but like, don't let your gay room get you on. drunk. No, it... it in 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 Missouri is is hot and humid, so we we were known for not, you know, walking around with just basketball shorts and that's it. So, yeah, it's Missouri. It's hot. It <laughs> has nothing to, to move do. To Missouri. Don't take nothing the wrong <laughs> way. I'm just saying that's my 16 year old. Okay, son. okay. We played football back then. Hey, I'd say that Eddie needs to slow down and not expect much out of life. And just relax. Don't reach too far. Just be cool where you are. Oh. I, I That's what I would say to this guy. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. You guys are so different, which 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 I just love. Why why would why wouldn't Rosa Parks wanna smoke or drink? Because she was Rosa Parks. She worked <laughs> you know, like you she worked hard really, every day. I, I, I think, think you guys are older. She was a conservative. She was like, you guys are I'm not sitting back here, and I'm not gonna have a drink, and I'm not gonna smoke because. 
I, no. I, I really doubt that. Really? I really doubt I, that. No. I'm pretty sure she you went home what? and was like, I was at the back of the she bus. I need, I need some rum and I need a cigarette. If we're talking about black history, I think Harriet Tubman, when time went on, and she'd be like, you know. I think they all might have smoked gonna get a little back email, then. By the way? All women you know, did. They was they going through a lot. Great the depression. Rosa, they was going exactly. through a lot. She was so neat and so... Think about it. All I just like, love her. We're going to run the world. Just you wait. That's how she's she was. She's my idol. So that's why I was like, right away, I was like, her, even if we don't smoke or drink, it's fine. <laughs> Am I being racist even talking about this? No. You know, in no. this... in this, There's a black guy in the room. We're good. Okay. Black. but Two, no, but And a black woman. Yes. So, but let's talk about this. You know, with our brands, now we have to be so politically correct. And I run on the Rocks Radio Show where I say whatever opinion I want. And then I think about, oh, I make Helen Keller jokes and I got... Helen she Keller is amazing as what? Right, but I got... Uh, Let's uh, smoke and drink with her. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have so many jokes about that. She wouldn't <laughs> be able to find it. But I got hate email. I'm like, well, have her call me and then we'll talk it out. And uh, But we have to be so PC now with everything. And I want to talk to you about this because... Yes, and with my, with my photo shoots and... But also, you know, we're marketing. into an age, for great reason, we're talking about gender equality. And, you know, we were joking about lingerie for men, but... Why not? That should be a conversation. I, I have a term. I always say trans, pan, lesbian, gay. Yeah, but if you say trans, you're going to get into Here's trouble, the thing. too. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, you're human. It's human. And however you so for me, feel sexy. So that's my takeoff. I'd be happy if I was a girl or if I was trans. Yeah. And, but Either and, way, it would have mattered to me. Mm -hmm. And that's exemplified in your fashion. Um, but with your creative process, I want to know how sensitive do you have to be now with we have to the take Me Too? Every type of every yeah. type of every type of woman, whether they're Asian, white, black, Latino. So we have to take every type of de demographic, especially for different seasons. So in winter, we'll usually go depending on the colors, you know, uh, since they're all um, since they're all going to be in white and light colors. You know, we're usually going to go take all the Latinos, the Arabs, the blacks, you know. And uh, in the summer, depending on what colors, um, we just go with every different demographic. But also with the Me Too movement, you want to make women look, because when you look at your Instagram and then you look at your fashion shows, women are on parade. We see every body part. There's and always going to be bad behavior, accusations, you know, every, every 10 years, every decade, there's going to be something going on. You know, and then 10 years from now, if it's not a Me Too movement, it's going to be a, I don't know, a hug me movement. So it's just going, there's it's always gonna going be, to be I was be on the rocks on. and I felt, <laughs> <laughs> and I felt violated. Um, you guys just literally are such a dichotomy of what's happening in the business world. I want to know about social media because social media, I hate doing social media. I wake up and I'm like, okay. Because I do social media for the radio show. I do it for right. my personal. I also do it for Facebook. And I do it, uh, you know, in so many different aspects. It's such a pain in my ass because it has to look a certain way. Your fans want to subscribe to a certain way. Mm -hmm. How much has social media kind of uh, detracted from your brand? Or has it helped your brand? It's really helped my brand, yeah. But Carl, you are a, you're a social media queen. I do it right. Yeah. I think it depends on what your what your vision is and what you're trying to do like what you want to get out of life like for me i don't like social media um you know i'm we built this not with social media but with engaging and interacting with people like that's where the brand comes alive it's more organic and you know it's authentic you know it's not just me trying to hey let me sell you a shirt or let me sell you some CBD. Yeah. I, I don't, for me, that's not what we're about. It's it's let me go and interact with you and, and see how you like our products and everything that we're trying to do. Um, you can really do that through your story. So you can, yeah. You can interact with your I, I with just, fans. for me, that's just not who, how I'm built. Right. I'm not built that way. I'm, I'm more old school, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day when, hey, let's just go talk about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, that's the way I'm built, um, you know, in this, this this age and this generation and, and the way people go and attack social media and, and and build businesses i'm all for that that's just not what i do and it's funny because you would look at our social media like i said you won't find nothing about me i'll purposely do that um, <laughs> literally because <laughs> we do such great research i have all your mug shots that's the a joke nobody shots. has a mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding yeah but, but you'll you'll see really some on private. our on our uh, on our instagram and 
I'll cross lines. Like, I want to invoke an emotion in you. Huh. That's what this prayer does. So one day you might, if you scroll through there, you might see a religious post. Yes, I did see that. And then at some point it's going to be like, okay, what's going on here? But now I'm invoking an emotion in you. Yes. So if you keep scrolling, you're going to see something a little bit different, you know, and then we'll sprinkle in stuff. But you won't find nothing about me. You'll just basically find messages. So about it's all the brand. about the brand identity. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And, 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 and that's it. And, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we do have stores that believe in the brand. And even though you may have some religious post or do this and that, they're like, that's okay. Because if you look at America, look at the world, everybody's different. Everybody has their own, you know, dreams and realities, perceptions in life. Everybody has their own opinion. We're all different. It's just how we interact. So, It's very bold because religious posts set me up, like, <laughs> immediately. I was raised Catholic for most of my life. So, like, you talk about God, and you talk about God, which is very inspirational. But at the same time, it invokes certain things. But like you said, people incorporate with the brand. So I see the inspiration from that. Whether or not I subscribe to the God portion is, is very... Yeah, I'm Christian, uh, Episcopalian, and I go to church every Sunday, you mm. know? It's... My old stripper name used to be Christian. So yes, it go. was. That, that was your God first. Bless, yeah. It was the Washington, yeah, so D.C. My, my, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same community, trust me. Um, and social media, you're very active on social media, and you've nailed it, girl. Thank you. Um, is it your team that does it? Like, no, how many hours? I do it by myself. Because you've responded. Because I posted something, I'm like, she's never going to respond, you know? And she's like, <laughs> great seeing you. I'm like, she's going through all of this. Um, yeah, but that's a big part of the business. Yeah, it is. Especially in the lingerie world, influencer world, celebrity world, when you're a model, you know, when you're doing podcasts, when you're owning all these brands, you know, you really want to like reach out to your fans and show them the best, you yeah. know, and show that love, especially, you know, let them know that you like, you're there for them. That's the most important thing. And I just signed up for this thing. It's called a cameo. Cameo is just, so and, great. And I've, I've gotten like a few um, requests and it's just been really amazing, you know, cause I usually get DMs of all the videos and you know, the, all the letters and, and love stories and everything. But uh, Cameo's been really great just directly. Are they paying for this, by the way? Are they sponsoring this app? Cameo? No. Ca no, okay. No, no, no. You're paid, basically. <laughs> so, okay. I know. Um, I, I'm on there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, no. But, like, you can actually interact, and you can send, like, a message to a friend. Right. Uh, Caleb, what I love about your Instagram is that we get to see you in your glam life, and we get to see you like, hey, I'm here. Woke up in my having pajamas. a great time. <laughs> yeah. And I love that because our fans want that. They want that interaction. I think you do a really good job. So I keep all my posts very glamorous. And then all my stories are just me in my sweats all day, running my errands. Girl, if I looked as good as you in my sweats. <laughs> but you'll see that all in my TV shows. So. I'm going to suit like to bed just in case I need to post something. <laughs> Man, you're going to have to connect. Cause you're gonna, yeah, we're going to have to Oh, some, there's Instagram. a connection here. So, yeah. Eddie, and I know social media is a big... <laughs> Yes, oh, oh, we're, oh, we're oh, nearing the end of the show, but yes. but social media is a big part of you. But you're traveling like literally all the time, and you're yeah. like on layovers, and you're like, oh, I have to post this for a fan and and all that. Doesn't yeah. that like it just weighs? I'm okay. I'm yeah? fine. Yeah, like I've got my like daily life in the office, and I'm fine. Like the weekends are all for playtime. And here we are. I decided to take a week off, so here we are in Los Angeles. And what uh, is your Instagram? Can we see it? Eddie Danger. Oh, it's all, it's just a bunch of drunk photos at this point. Nothing special. Um, well, but then again, like I just like to keep things kind of cool and casual. I just think social media is, is such a high pressure, and it's – I enjoy it, but not enjoy it. I love I, that. I yeah. like having family across the country. That's my That is true. Thing. It connects, and your fans are able to say their own personal stories. It's weird, like, from Austria, from Germany, yeah. and I'm traveling there, you know, and in France. It's just great, you know? I just like the fact that I can go to any city in the United States and have a free drink, you know? That's very cute. People do love you in every city. And I don't want to be a douche, but, like, it's, it's just very nice, you know? <laughs> like, I have family, you know what I mean? It yeah. gets to that point. You guys, um, I have like four pages of notes for each of you, and we barely uh, got into anything. But 
for our entrepreneurs out there, you've heard, keep working hard. If you have a passion for it, that's going to set you aside from a lot of other people. <laughs> We're going to do rapid fire real fast, individual, and then you're gonna, you guys are going to give your social media, sure. and then... Uh, and then we're done. Who wants to go first? I'll go last. Okay. Um, Kayla Methvin. Kay. And my social media is at Madame Methvin. And then you can go to www.madamethvin.com. And you can buy all my lingerie there. You can also book me on Cameo. And uh, what else? Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. You guys, her website is so sexy, no matter what team you play for. Ugh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, worst fashion trend you've fallen victim to? Worst fas fashion trend I've ever done? That, that you fall fallen victim to, that you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Mine was those Hot Topic pants. Oh, oh god. Um, when I was younger, I, I had a nose piercing here, and I had a piercing here. Oh, I hate those weird little... And I've oh. had, I literally, I've had to go and t take it off, and... Uh, Oh, laser and, and it. Oh, and oh, oh, okay. Take it. <laughs> so, so when we had those uh, those trends back then, yeah, that was really bad. Okay. I ha I had those. So. Uh, biggest pet peeve when dealing with models on set. Uh, when they come un unshaved, unshowered, and um, um, bloated. Oh, girl, we're all a little bloated sometimes. <laughs> Celebrity you would want to do a fashion show based around. Charlize Theron. That's a great answer. Uh, worst date you've ever had? A guy came up to me once. He took my photo and then left. Oh. And then he <laughs> sold it. Can, you have to work for another fashion designer, living or dead, for the rest of your life. Who would that be? John Charles de Casabajac. Because he used my jacket in the Lady Gaga music video telephone. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I love it. Oh, God, I, I love you, girl. Thank uh, you. Who is next? I'll go last. I'll take it. Okay, Eddie Danger. Yes. Uh, celebrity crush. Uh, David Coverdale. Who? David Coverdale, the lead singer of White Snake. Can you look that up, Curtin? Okay. Strangest fan request. Uh, smashing um, uh, bananas into somebody's face, uh, oh, that covered is in weird. dog piss. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what would the name of your reality show be? Mm, I don't know. This total disaster. Something like that. Anal Ted. Excuse me, what was that? Anal Ted. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Song for your American Idol audition. Oh, Stand By Me. Okay, I want to hear a little bit of it. Oh, no, I'm not singing tonight. Oh, come on. Yes, 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 Oh, no. No, I got rubbed into this last week. We have some reverb. Oh, no. No, if I don't have my guitar, I will not sing. I will not sing. You want to do a little bit of stand-by? Hello, 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 hello. No. Just do a little, okay. No. Uh, you can only live and perform in one city for the rest of your life, because we know you've been in every city. Yes. Which city would that be? San Diego. Wow. That's where I'm going to retire. No fucks given. I love it. Some girl I met in Phoenix, Arizona airport she got me stoned out of my mind in, in San Diego when I was the happiest man I've I ever met. I do love San Diego. Eddie oh. Danger, where can our viewers on their shows find you? At Eddie Danger. Like, I'm the only one. So it, it literally go is. sort the that out. Like, so deal can with we it. find you on Pornhub? Uh, I, I wouldn't because it's free. So okay. go pay me on fucking <laughs> Just for Fans. Be like, you should be. It's only 10 bucks. So we can tune into Pornhub, everyone. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. It's, oh, my it's garbage. This is so no, it's not. Vinny, you're a private person. I made your questions mm. kind of easier. Uh, guilty pleasure munchies. Oh, come on, babe. Onion rings. Oh, uh, chicken. Okay, and chicken. Thank okay. you. What would the name of your biography be? Bad behavior. Oh, love I that. love that. Uh, you have to found another business, found and create another business. What kind of business would it be? I think I already did it. Um, no, but I'm saying it has to be another. <laughs> oh, self-starter um, over here. You know what? I'm, I'm, I want to dabble into TV. Oh, okay. You, we have a reality show right here, by the way, I just have to say. There's something that works. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, keep me in mind. Uh, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? We did six year old, but eighteen year old. Oh, eighteen year old self. Um, yeah, we were struggling at that point. It was. I would tell my eighteen year old self that, you know, no matter what comes your way, just keep pushing. Keep pushing, you guys. Uh, what is the uh, since we're talking about lucky? 
Lucky soul. What is the luckiest thing to happen to you? The luckiest thing that ever happened to me, um, well, I have to say with my friend, um, when he got drafted to the Lakers and he was like, we moving to LA. And coming from St. Louis, you saw LA, you saw Baywatch, you know, you saw the stars and celebrities. But, I was in Baywatch. You know, we didn't have no beach. All we had was creeks, ponds, lakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I do love so. Too. What did you do at Baywatch? Crustaceans. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that 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 was the luckiest thing. All right, uh, Jen Selena said you had to take a drink if you didn't say meeting Mosaic PR. Boop boop. I gotta take a drink. Yep. I ain't got. Okay. <laughs> Where can people uh, buy Lucky's Home? Well, now you can uh, you can buy our water. We're on Amazon. Um, so if you look up search Lucky Soul uh, hemp water, Lucky Soul CBD, we're going to come up. Somehow we started trending on the first page. Um, you can also go to our website at LuckySoulUSA.com. Um, we, we have so much stuff coming. Um, I'm big on collaborations. So I got some very interesting ones coming up in the next month that... I'm super excited about. You guys, look for Lucky Soul. I literally have to pee so bad. Oh, my uh, God. Coming up, we have fashion designer Andrew Christian. Jen Lyon from Claws is coming on. Singer <laughs> Debbie Holiday. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, all the fathers who have to be mothers, and all the people that have lost their mothers. Stay tuned. We'll see you next Tuesday. Yes. Thank you. This has been On the Rocks with Alexander. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On The Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On The Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday.